were based in the town of Resolute, just 800 miles from the North Pole. This is where most polar expeditions set out from, and is also home to the Canadian government's Polar Continental Shelf Project, a centre for scientists researching the Arctic. There are few places as bleak and as hostile. I arrive just as a blizzard engulfs the town. Steve's flight is delayed, and for the next few days, I'm on my own. Weather conditions at 1 p.m. Resolute Bay, blizzard warning, wind east-southeast 31, wind chill 1550, equivalent temperature minus 25. For today, cloudy with snow and blowing snow. Let me just say, say this first. I didn't drive the car or the van. The producer did. Look what happened. I'm stuck again. But this just illustrates the point that you just can't see the different different depths of the snow. So the the producer just couldn't see that we we're actually approaching a big snow mountain. <laughs> so this is the result. We're here to look at the effects global warming will have on polar bears working alongside the world's leading expert. But the work requires us to fly out onto the sea ice by helicopter. In these conditions, that's impossible. Professor Malcolm Ramsey, polar ecologist with the University of Saskatoon, studies the latest satellite images. Good news, or I mean, it could, well, could be worse. Tell me, it could be worse. It could be worse, it could always be worse. But this is, the last two days, has just been sitting here, uh -huh. sort of diddling around. So we're right there, mm, mm. and there's a big low pressure system just sitting off to our mm -hmm. west, which is this. What can you we do? Just said, you can't do anything. No, no. And what's really bad, when you're sitting in the air and you're flying along at 100 kilometers an hour, and you can't see anything, and the snow is blowing, mm -hmm. and you can't even land, mm -mm. that's very unsettling. That's what we don't want. We want to avoid that. Yeah. And as I get older, I want to avoid it ever more. <laughs> yeah. So it's patience then, is it? Yeah. But when it's like this, you can't even work. No. And all you're doing is just trying to stay alive. Mm. It may seem odd to talk about global warming in the middle of a blizzard, but in the past 20 years, climatic changes have already reshaped the Arctic environment. On average, temperatures have risen by 4 degrees centigrade. The permanent ice pack is 40% thinner and an area the size of Texas has melted. If it continues to warm at the present rate, the future for polar bears looks bleak. Next slide. <clears throat> Here we have what the sea ice was, the volume of sea ice in 1955. Here's a prediction based on the best climate models of what it'll be like 100 years later, 2050, which is certainly within the lifespan of children alive today and roughly half the ice that was present in 1955. And one of the consequences of this could be to cut off cold water formation here, mm. which in a complicated way is driving the Gulf Stream coming up here. And it's perfectly possible to cut the Gulf Stream off. We know what's happened in the past. If the Gulf Stream gets cut off, then suddenly Northern Europe becomes Northern Canada. You have crop failure, you have catastrophic effects through Europe. When tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people are affected, then of, in wealthy countries, then politicians will pay attention. But as it stands now, if it's just a few polar bears and seals, it's of interest but of no great importance. 